I'm ready. Ready. Yep. Okay. Um, let's call the meeting to order. Um, first order of business is to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Um, you want to have any additions, questions, problems with the minutes from the last meeting? Pretty brief. Um, I guess with no problems, I make a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Or would Second. someone like to make a motion, I guess? Yeah, Bruce did, and I seconded it, Adam. Okay. Um, Bruce and Brian, uh, permanent seconded, so I'd say meeting approved or minutes approved. Um, and I guess on to the new business um, of the meeting. I think we're going to continue the discussion um, of the capture rate study. Um, Karen, I don't know if we have any speakers, anything like that planned for today, or if it's just a discussion on what we've talked about the past three or four meetings. Well, we um, are open, of course, if anyone has any further questions or discussion from the previous meetings, um, but we do have a draft. Um, Pete helped work on the uh, draft and, and we kind of ran it past the recycling partnership people as well, just to get their feedback already. So um, we just got that. Um, it's a draft, of course, but we were working on it today, so I didn't send it out. Um, but if if you all want to um, discuss anything before that or discuss anything from their presentation, that's fine. But I can pull up the draft and we can just kind of go through it. Yeah, that's fine. Because um, I, my opinion, and I don't know the rest of the committee, but I feel that at this point, we need to move forward with this, get something going, because it seems to me, again, we've spent four, three, four, maybe five meetings. So we're going on half a year of one topic that I still I still feel like there's a whole lot of loose ends that need tied up. Um, so I, I would, I think, getting a draft or getting something uh, to push this forward uh, mm -hmm. is, is where we need to be. And if not, I think we need to, to move on or, um, again, I don't think we can spend two, three more meetings on this one topic, or we're just at this point, we spent a year on it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm all for looking at what you all have put together. Uh, I'd say as a committee, we could try to comment on it a little bit. I think it would be good to email that out to us uh, when you get it somewhat ready. And then from then we can maybe have brief discussions and, and future meetings. But again, I my, my opinion is we need to start wrapping up the capture rate issue or, or, or move on to yeah. something else. Yeah, and it does help to have something to go by. Um, Pete, did you have something? Yeah, <clears throat> if we can go ahead and email it to people now and then bring it up on screen. Sure. People have a second to kind of quickly read over it and uh, we can have some opinions and we can kind of tell people, describe the, the draft as we go. I think it's pretty good. It, it was based loosely on the RFP that uh, the partnership had supplied us for another city. Uh, they had some extra stuff in there that we stripped out and then we uh, included some more detail as to what we would want. So uh, it's not long. It, it won't take very. It won't take very much for us to review it. I would hope that we can get some great feedback today. Maybe make some changes and get this thing approved. Uh, hopefully today, and we can move on to the next item. So, uh, Karen, I think you're, you're sending that out now. Yeah, actually, I just sent it to the committee members, but I realized that we have some, um, I should have at least, I don't know, I'll just pull it up on the screen and I'll make sure everybody has it at the end. In, in their own file, but let me go ahead and get it up. Okay, can everybody see it? Yes. Okay, the, so, so what Pete had is 
just in the regular words and then what he added based on some feedback from the recycling partnership is what's underlined. So that's the reason for the underlines. And I think there's still a couple comments in here from Charlotte or Asami. Um, so that's what those are. Um, and Pete, I can scroll or whatever, but if you want to talk about it. Yeah, so the 1st section there is basically who we are. This is comes from our mission statement. There shouldn't be anything in there. That's a big surprise to anybody. Uh, this is what we've used for a lot of stuff. So that shouldn't be any different. Now, uh, the 2nd, 1 starts to get into what we're asking. This is our. We're seeking proposals uh, for. Uh, a firm to collect garbage and recycling materials from up to 450 households and uh, garbage from 150 non recycling households in 3 distinct areas in Jefferson County. With the purpose of sorting the material into appropriate categories to analyze and to deliver data on the capture of recyclables. We're asking the vendor. We're telling the vendor that we will supply them with statistical data. Uh, and we'll. And we'll ask for their assist and for their assistance uh, in identifying areas based on their experience in conducting these studies. So, uh, more or less, instead of us going ahead and identifying those areas, we can have some loose ideas. But we could take and have the vendor help us select those based upon other studies that they completed, so that we can be ensured assured that we're getting the best bang for our buck by picking the right areas. The uh, next part of there is the vendor will work with the waste management district and members of the committee to coordinate the collection. So it could be in the in a small city, it could be an unincorporated area, it could be in the urban services district, but the waste management district uh, and members of the committee will work to coordinate those collections. Uh, it is our desire to use the data to assist in understanding individual household waste management behaviors related to recycling uh, and developing an education and outreach program with the goal of capturing more recyclable materials. So, does anybody have any questions on that paragraph? I'm sure you guys are probably this, reading it at the same time. Yeah, this wouldn't be back a truck study. This would be individual home study, right? Yes. Okay. Any no questions on that? That's basically what we want them to do. So, uh, Karen, if you could scroll up to the desired mm -hmm. data. Uh, what we're looking for is household generation and capture rate estimates for targeted individual curbside commodities, which is in an appendix that you'll see in just a moment. And uh, element two would be measured levels of contamination and types of contaminants in curbside containers. Uh, and that would be in appendix B. Uh, we're also, uh, other thing is that we're asking the vendor to provide us a final report to include the methodology, the narrative, uh, to include all milestones, all raw data, analyzed data, conclusions, and executive summary, and recommendations and suggestions, suggested priorities for the waste management district to improve capture of recyclable materials and reduce contamination. Uh, and we would also want a vendor uh, to include a final presentation to the review board. Any questions on what we're asking them to give us? Uh, we can do, definitely do a little bit of wordsmithing here. So um, if there's something that jumps out at you, just he can I ask you a question. Yeah. Um, are you going to try to get? Uh, Material from low income, middle income, and high income areas, so you have a mix of everybody. Or how are you going to pick where you where you pick the the houses or the homes or whatever you're picking? I think that's the idea uh, that we have in general. Uh, we've kind of all bounced that around several times. I think that we don't necessarily want to pick the pick the areas until we talk with the vendor who has experience in doing it. But I would say in general, yes, we, we want to get the cross section uh, of um, houses that gives us a pretty decent idea of the differences between the, uh, the different 
whatever we pick. So low income uh, could be could be an area with low participation in a contracted area. It could be a a contracted area with high participation, and it could be a area uh, of unincorporated uh, area uh, with as many recyclers as we can find. Let me, let me tell you why I asked the question. We we had a meeting at Windy Hills, and we have a garbage issue, but they're talking about recycling. Maybe go to once every two weeks instead of once a week. And one guy said, I don't have enough material to uh, fill it every two weeks. I have enough to fill two every week. So I that, that's what I can't understand. How we're going to figure out except be able to how we're going to pick the right people. Somebody who don't you got to have somebody who has more than a little bit of garbage or recycling or somebody doesn't have have a lot that's what scares me yeah we'll have um and that's part of what a capture rate study is uh you know some people are going to be really good recyclers and some of them are not going to be as good recyclers so uh those people that are not very good uh what we're going to find out is how much recyclable materials are in their waste instead of the the recycling container so that'll be part of the data and it is what it is uh, so, um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I, I totally get it. I, I have weekly pickup and I fill my container up pretty much most weeks. Uh, although I'm generating less waste as cause Karen always gets on me cause I have too much waste. <laughs> so, uh, I'm battling my wife for less waste. And, uh, so I, I, I totally get it. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if there's no more questions about the, that section, then, uh, we're seeking, uh, proposals to conduct this study. The waste management district is providing an open opportunity for consulting firms to submit statements of qualification. Price estimates, uh, for elements 1 and 2 and methodologies. They will deliver strong. Uh, they think will deliver strong statistical significant results at the best possible cost. Um. Consultants firms are invited to choose uh, and submit which study methodology they propose to use and with supporting information on why and how that methodology will best deliver the desired data. You know, going into this thing, we have a decent idea of what a capture rate study is, but we've never performed one. I think that through this, what we're asking in the way that we're writing this is to allow a vendor that has the experience to come in and help us create a capture rate study. Not that we are telling them exactly how to do it. We want to rely on their expertise and uh, what we can kind of come up with. Uh, despite the request uh, for separate pricing, uh, it is anticipated that one consultant firm will be awarded the opportunity to conduct the aspects, all aspects of the study. So we don't want three uh, vendors, uh, we want one, uh, the selected consulting firm will provide. The consulting firm will be provided uh, a working space needed to complete the study at the solid waste city, solid waste campus, which is Meriwether. Uh, vendors shall supply Metro with a list of equipment needed for the project, including collection and uh, collection trucks and personnel. Any equipment or personnel Metro cannot supply will be the responsibility of the vendor to procure. Metro will dispose of all material after the project. So um, what we're doing here in a way to lower the cost is allow the vendor to say, hey, this is all the stuff that we need. Um, you guys supply all this and that will hopefully help our bottom line when it comes to bidding this out because we have trucks, we have people most of the time uh, so, uh, if a vendor doesn't have to come in and, hot and rent trucks and hire people, uh, the better that it will be for us in our bottom line. Uh, required contents of proposals, all proposals submitted, uh, must have a minimum, uh, provide the following information and, uh, you can scroll up just a little bit more Karen description of the methodology, uh, that to produce the desired data. Uh, description on how the pro proposed methodologies can be expected to provide the most statistically sound results. Uh, 
key seasonal and other factors that should be considered in conducting the study. I think that's really important. I think the time of year that you do some of these things is, is really key. Uh, if not doing it, you know, anytime you do a waste composition study, you should do it based upon seasons. Uh, so would that be a consideration that we need to take into account for doing a, a capture rate study? Uh, a statement of the proposing firm's qualifications, including a brief background on similar work uh, that they've conducted, two or three examples, and a total estimated cost for the study with uh, the cost of each component listed separately. It's pretty short. It's just over a page, uh, but I think that this proposal tells them what we are looking for uh, in general terms and allows them to give us their experience and expertise to help us hone it in to know what we want. And it also gives the opportunity for us to reduce our costs by supplying some of the materials needed to be able to do it. Uh, and we can supply a lot of the data that these people don't have to go out and get. So it would take, it would take us, if it's gonna be out into the unincorporated parts of town, it's gonna require uh, some private haulers to be able to give us addresses uh, and information and work with us on the collection side of things to make this, uh, make this work. It would require some coordination. But as part of the Waste Management District, I think that's what we're here to do. So that is the draft proposal. Um, initial thoughts. We don't have to do this. These are the, the categories. So, um, these are the thoughts that we have. I'm just curious of what everybody else's opinion on it is. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. So for the, the 450 homes plus the 150 homes that we're only doing car that don't have recycling is. What is the minimum number that we need in order for this study to be statistically significant? Because it sounds like that's kind of a guideline that we're proposing, but that they can potentially, they don't, we don't want them to exceed that number, but we want them to maybe stay within that limit. Sumeda, I think that's a really good question. And one of the things that I didn't get a chance to go back and do is make it an option to where they can they can offer number of households in a scale of three, like a smaller scale. How does that statistically line up versus a medium versus a large? I think that we could go ahead and write that in. Um, would that would that be more towards what your question is trying to address? Because I agree, we're stating 450, but is that the best? That we should do? Are we going to get the best bang for our buck using that? I really don't know. I was wondering if that 450 was based on a, a budget that we had in mind, maybe as a maximum or okay. No, it wasn't. It was really kind of listening to other communities and some of the numbers that they had did that seemed to be in that range. I'm thinking it might help to ask the recycling partnership to help us determine what the minimum number of homes should be for it to be statistically significant. And then if the hauler or the, if the contractor wants to exceed that, then that's fine. But at least we have a baseline of, you know, them hitting that minimum target. And then if they can do different housing types and things like that, then that's good too, but. I agree. Um... We can certainly ask them, but do you see a benefit of asking them to give us a scale of three, or are we opening up ourselves to uh, higher cost by giving them too much power? Can you just can you explain what you meant by scale of three again? I say it again. I'm sorry. When you said a scale of three, what, what did you mean exactly? Like 450 is kind of where I thought that it would be. And that's going to be statistically uh, relevant to a certain level. If you go up to 950, it, the statistics will probably get a little bit better. If you go to 1500, they'll get a little bit better. 
but each time the costs are going to increase. So how much do they agree increase from the 450 to the 1500? And is it worth the cost uh, for the increased amount of accuracy? Yeah, I mean, I think unless we feel like we can fund a study that's 1500 homes, we probably don't want to ask for those proposals. So, if there's a range that we can come up with based on the budget for the study, then maybe we can ask them to stay within that range and, and provide a minimum threshold. Like, for example, we can say we, we need you to do at least 100 homes, but then you could do more up to, you know, whatever number and then tell us how best you would structure that. Um, whether it's more detailed studies in a slightly smaller number of homes or just covering a larger number, but then, you know, okay. Keep, detail. keep in mind that because this is an RFP, if we put it out, um, and the prices come in too high, we're not obligated to take anything. Um, if we put a number out there or our budget out there, well, you know, I, I don't know what the budget's going to be is particularly from any con any capture rate studies that have been done in other cities last year the cost is irrelevant and we don't know what it's going to be this year because of the increases in cost um i see your point well maybe your scaled idea is good then so we can at least it'll inform us and then you know there's always an opportunity to negotiate that Yes, to get a sense. What's everybody else's thoughts on that? I think maybe um, you start with your 450 number. If you kind of feel like that's a good number and, you know, see, I guess, how prices come in based on that number. And if, you know, there's more or less room in that budget number that you might need to increase or decrease that a little bit or be able to increase or decrease that a little bit or maybe add another area if the bid comes in lower than expected. Um, but I, I think you have to, you know, like you said, put out a some number to get get started with. I just, I just, I don't, I just don't think uh, or she I think she, she's basically just asking, like, where you came up with that number. Yeah, um, just by, and, and I mean, your experience, you know, maybe you've looked at these bids before and that's, that's a good round number. I mean, good enough for me, but um, I, don't, I don't have a whole lot of experience with it, but just listening to other people, I think that that's pretty much a, a mid range number. Um, so I had to start someplace, I had to put pen to paper or keyboard to paper. Yeah, and I think that's fine. Like, I don't mean to hone in on that detail too much, but it's just helpful context, yeah. Pete, the city uh, and others have used I IQS research based in Middletown. That was the study that the city performed in 2011. And um, the only reason I'm bringing that up is they could serve as a mini consultant on the front end on the statistical significance that she raises. Uh, the last study we did uh, throughout Jefferson County, we had 398 valid responses on that study, and that yielded a marginal sampling error of 4.91% at a 95% confidence level. So I don't know if that equates to 450 and 150, but we might contact an expert consultant and for Practically, I wouldn't think it'd be a lot of money. They could give us a understanding of the statistical significance in this study. I think we can find some statistics majors um, that understand that stuff. Might not have to use a consultant to do that part of it, but I'm pretty sure that we can find. I mean, I mean it's math. There, there would be somebody at U of L. Yeah, you know, in the statistics area that could do that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's just a formula. I don't have the formula here, but just thinking about 398 valid responses, and that was a 95% confidence level. 
uh, it was statistically significant out of all the households in Jefferson County, for example. So, yeah, and that's basically what we did in the first 10 year study when they sent out responses and had right. so many responses and right. You know, it, I didn't talk to she had a good question and, and I think yeah. that can be answered probably by somebody at U of L, frankly. Okay. I have a question as far as, and I, I'm, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't read the draft very well, but um, I still feel like in all the meetings and everything, most of these capture rate studies were done with a goal in mind, with a um, something they were striving towards accomplishing. Um, what, what do you feel like? the goal is of this capture rate study? Is it just to get that informational as to how well people are recycling or how how well they're not recycling? Or, or, or are we trying to, um, once this capture rate study is completed, um, provide education, provide uh, something in order for them to improve and then check and see how we did. Um, what 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 do you feel is is the goal or what we're going to obtain from this information? My goal here would be that we have the data and information to know where to target our education with people, and um, we may get into this thing and find out. Well, I think that we're capturing a lot of the aluminum cans, which has a lot of value. We're actually not capturing hardly any at all. Uh, so we would have that statistical information to go out to people and say this, you know, this is where we're at with aluminum can recycling. We have a, a messaging campaign uh, centered on that, and we then have a measurable uh, that we can look and see if our education campaign made an impact on us capturing more aluminum cans, which has the highest value in the recycling box uh, for what we want. Now, we might get into it and, fit, and, understand, and we are capturing a bunch of aluminum cans, and we decide that we want to go with cardboard, uh, and our education, education campaign looks totally different. Uh, education campaigns are, are starting to try to focus on one thing at a time and uh, you get you get better results in that way. So uh, Karen, can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's where a lot of people have went to. This, this information will allow us to know what to target uh, and where. It could be that it's got a great capture in one part of town and it does it in another. So we spend a lot of money and time and effort on the education uh, for something that would work in one part of town, but we try the same thing in another part of town and we basically wasted all of that money. So it, it's just trying to target to understand where we're going to target our education and give us the statistics to do so. Okay. Do you, do you foresee, or is, as part of that grand plan, um, doing a second capture rate study to see how that, uh, education performed or is that just something deep into the future? I think that's very possible. I think that's very possible. If, if we can couple this with, uh, the, what we have coming into the recycling center, we might not have to do another capture rate study. We could do a, a MRF study, uh, beforehand as well. And tell us, hey, aluminum can capture all throughout the county went up 15%. So we might not have to do a full capture rate study the second time around. We might be able to do it at the recycling center itself with incoming loads. Okay. We're looking for we're looking for the behavior first. We're looking for results second. Okay, very good. I do think that's a really good point, though, Adam. 
we probably need to have some um, have a very good understanding of the recyclable material going into the MRFs as it stands. Uh, so that that can be the ultimate measure of are we doing getting more material countywide? That that's one of the things I've been reading about. We we fortunately have a very small number of MRFs that receive the material here, and depending on what they thought was proprietary or not. That would be a relatively easy way to measure changes in volumes, which they have probably assimilated over a course of some time, I would think, in Jefferson County. So don't know how that really dovetails with a you know capture rate study, but that would be an aggregate that would be good information, I would think. Just a quick question along those lines. So if a truck, just, just so I can wrap my head around this. So if a truck who runs the same route each day, let's say collecting recyclables, does is that truck weighed prior to, to dumping to measure the amount of recyclables it collects um, for each route each time? So would you be able to like base that off the truck's tonnage to see like, hey, for the past six months, he was right around one ton each each time for this this specific route. And then after our capture rate study and our education, um, now it seems like that same truck's collecting a ton and a half of material from that same route. And I think that would be a, a way to measure how well that performed it, th does it work like that uh, yes if the if the area that you selected is comparable to the area that you studied and it's consistent so with if you're talking about 450 households in total a recycling route in the city might include uh 1500 to 2200 households so if you're going to target your education, you might be able to see that on a route level. Um, so, yeah, I think that you have the MRF method uh, that can give you the overall overall impact on countywide recycling, and you have smaller studies that can be at the you know the truck side, uh, the route level, that can also tell you how you're performing in a specific area. Uh, so I think both of those are really good methods uh, to judge the impact of our education once we know what the behavior is that we need to modify. Okay. Really good suggestions. I think another, it'll be helpful, at least in the position I'm in, to, to be able to sit down and, and read through the draft uh, sure. uh, just to get a, like I said, a full overall feel for, for what's on there. But I, I feel like as far as what you've talked about and what's in there thus far, I, I think sounds very good and sounds like a a way to wrap up these last four months worth of meetings to, to get something accomplished. I don't know if anyone else on the committee has other comments on the draft without really reading through it thoroughly, but um, I guess let me know if so. Yeah, we can, we can go ahead and send this out. We might do a little bit of wordsmithing, but we're not going to change anything substantive. If, if we do, that would be noted in anything that we send out. And uh, everybody can kind of review it and uh, we can take a vote on it at the next meeting. Does that Sounds sound good. good to everybody? Yes. Hot dang, we got, we got a, hopefully a draft <laughs> RFP.
I think we have a full com advisory committee this month, right? Am I thinking? I need to pull up my calendar. Um, I didn't know because that could be something we can do at the full committee on the 19th instead of waiting till the very next meeting since it's basically the same people. Could, could so, we attempt to do that? I think that that would be good to help us move forward a little bit faster. I think that the partnership did present to the full committee, if I'm not mistaken, instead of just this committee. Can't remember. No, I think it was this committee because that's what was the minutes. Okay. They were real short because it was basically their presentation. Um, but I think like when Hillary gave her thing about the education materials, we did that at the full committee. Uh, I don't, it's the same people. I don't see any reason why we can't use the meetings for whatever needs to be done. Um, but I, I will send this draft. I did send it just to the subcommittee members, but I'll send it to the full advisory committee um, with instructions so that anyone who didn't come to this meeting knows Hey, this is something we would like to um, get going as soon as we can. So I guess we'll wait and see if um, if it seems like we're able to push it through um, at the full committee. So ideally, you send it out to everyone in the commit the full committee. Uh, we bring it up at the full committee meeting here in a week or so, and um, take in all comments. Or any any suggestions what have you at the full committee meeting from everyone and then the following subcommittee week week we finalize it and say that's that or or do you would you like to finalize it here at the full committee meeting it would be my preference that we had the full committee vote on it next week we should try okay. to do that in my opinion and that so, way we can go ahead and move forward yeah, so I would, um, when you send the draft out, maybe open up or suggest email comments there so people can reply to that and any input they may have can go ahead and kind of get out there before the, the full committee meeting. And then, like you said, at that point, you've had your chance to comment, say what you need to. I, I'm, I agree. I, I'm ready to yeah. put it to bed. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And I would, I would like to with, I know we brief, we didn't really go over those commodity categories, but I think that our, um. Members that, um, you know, from the MRFs and, um, just been in the industry for a long time. I feel like that's, um, something everybody should really look at too, and make sure they're. Um, proper categories that. I'm sure the vendor, if they've done it before, could have their suggestions, but. Um. Yeah, Karen, I think that's a good point. And I think that what I would do is, is ask them directly to take a look at those categories so that they're not just aware of looking at the same in general, but we want them to specifically look at those categories to make them exclusive. Which and and just a quick note back to the sample size, I, I did some quick searching and uh, it sounds like if the once you get past a thousand sample sizes, no matter how big the population is, it doesn't impact the statistical significance that much. So there's no need to exceed a thousand basically. So if we felt comfortable, we could bring it up to that and then ask them to that they can suggest something lower if they want to justify it. But just wanted to share that. I don't think we need to spend too much time worrying about that. So um, I guess. 300, 300, 300, 100. 300, uh, three different areas, and then 100 with just people that don't recycle. And the purpose of the one that don't recycle is just to get a baseline of what's, I mean, if somebody is just totally not recycling, what is in there? That's, that's the only purpose of that. It's more or less a waste composition study to a certain extent. So is that okay? Do y'all want to switch that to 300, 300? Well, do you think that's going to significantly increase the price 
because you're essentially doubling the amount of, of work. I mean, it, to me, that would be a significant price increase. It probably would increase the price significantly. Um, if we got into it and we got the RFP for that and we said that, hey, we can't afford that, can you all make it a 500? I think that that's okay in an RFP. And, and it sounds like the, that you've left a lot of items somewhat open or, or up for suggestion from from which which vendor the vendors who are going to bid on that. So again, I don't think it would hurt to throw that number out there and then see what kind of prices you get. And then again, if if it's way way higher than what what you're expecting, then we just like you said have to taper it down a little to get to where where we need to be. You know, a good question I asked Pete, because you brought it up about recycling cans. If you could ask the customer, or the, the household, do you recycle cans or do you take them and sell them yourself? That is something that's true. Uh, I don't know if we can include a survey that would go along with this. Uh, we might be able to. Yeah, that well, answer, that's a good question to, to figure out, you know, who. Are you yeah. are you putting them in the this, can or the the box? Or you're the point would the be store? they wouldn't be in the trash, yeah. right? So if they're not in the trash and they're not in the recycling, then one way or the other, some good serve. Yeah, I see that point too. Yeah, the the, the kicker would be if there's a bunch in the trash. So yeah. after after we do um, the study, and I wouldn't want to to necessarily give a whole lot of information to people before we conduct the study because we don't want to impact their behavior before. Uh, so we have, you know, true results, but there could potentially be a survey that took place afterwards that also gave some of the analysis or the statistics from uh, what we found out. So I do think that there's a possibility of a good survey that can come from this. Don't think that we want to do it prior to our our study, though. Thanks, Bruce. Okay, well, we might make a, a few adjustments on the draft before I send it out to the um, full committee, but um, just based on some of the discussion today, just so we can get it as. Um, you know, as adjusted to what we've talked about as possible and then. Um, I'll encourage everyone on the committee to read over it before the full advisory committee, and we'll put that on the agenda as something we can do and hopefully vote on. I like the draft. I think they did a good job. Pete. Okay. Mark one up for the uh, contracts committee. <laughs> After five months. <laughs> just how it goes. <laughs> Anything further on this? I mean, I'd... I'm, I'm curious on what you guys want to do next. Um, I know one thing that needs to start taking place, probably separate of this committee, but it's also a contract of sorts, which is the host agreement. And we previously had talked about this, but it kind of got laid back while some of the other things uh, that was taking place with contracts um, or uh, lawsuits had had completed. But uh, I think we need to have a host agreement for the community. It can get a little bit touchy for some people that are uh, competitors of uh, waste management. So uh, if there's a conflict there, you need to be very cognizant of that that uh, conflict and not participate. Uh, but I know that uh, we definitely want to have uh, Bob Schindler, uh, who has agreed to be on that committee. Uh, so uh, anybody that's interested in being in that, uh, please uh, let us know. I think that we had some people, but I'm not sure if anybody would be interested still. So I think we just ask people and we will ask again at the next full advisory committee uh, but we need probably about four to five people that put really me on it, Pete. It. Pete, put okay. me on it. Yep. Please. Pete, can you can you explain just briefly what that is? 
So, uh, a host agreement is, um, it's a community host agreement and any, uh. County that has a landfill within it, uh, there's considered um, a little bit of post community control uh, and um, uh, benefits to it because having a landfill in your community is uh, sometimes a very uh, can bring extra waste, extra litter, extra things uh, into the community that can be a problem. So. Um, an example would be in where these things kind of started was um, anybody old enough to remember the garbage trains and the garbage barges. Okay, yeah. so up in the yeah. up in the northeast uh, landfill space got really tight. So they was putting their waste on these barges and trains and sending them out into the country looking for a home. And uh, what they can do is fill up a landfill in a hurry with waste from New Jersey. And a host community uh, agreement kind of controls how much waste can come into your community so that you can be assured that your area has enough space for the future. So it kind of controls where and how much waste can come into your landfill. Uh, a bad example of that was a landfill in Eastern Kentucky that saw the money uh, and 90% of the waste that was coming into it was coming from New Jersey, I believe. And uh, the landfill couldn't handle it all, uh, but it was great. The money was great until the landfill basically slid uh, and created an environmental disaster and the odors and smells was, was bad. The community was ticked off. They couldn't believe that this was, was allowed to happen, but there was no agreement in place to limit uh, how much stuff that can come into that community uh, to protect that community. So that was one thing. Another thing is if anybody know, uh, remembers the fracking waste uh, that was radioactive, uh, unless you have a host community benefit that prevents radioactive material coming into your community, you can end up like, and I don't know what landfill in the state of Kentucky it was, but they had workers that was exposed to uh, higher levels of radiation and they have specific areas of that landfill that has very high levels of radiation from fracking uh, waste. So uh, it prevents that type of stuff from coming in. So you, you get to kind of control the amount of material that's coming in. You get to keep materials that you don't want to come into your community, either through transport or whatever. Uh, so uh, that's the other part of it. Uh, and then because of those things, you get host benefit uh, benefits. And one of those in the last one was that the landfill would conduct to uh, community uh, free drop uh, junk drop offs. Well, we've moved away from that because we went to uh, uh, the pop up drop offs, uh, but there are other things that could be a benefit, uh, like the operation of our uh, full service recycling centers. They provide the hauling from those those centers for for basically free, uh, which is waste management has continued to do, even though our our host uh, agreement had failed had expired. Uh, but there's other there, there's benefits out there that I think could be great uh, donation to certain programs that prevent uh, litter uh, or prevent contamination of hazardous materials into the landfill. It benefits the landfill and it benefits the community by making sure that that stuff gets to where it really should go. So it's it's basically a a contract between the community and a disposal facility uh, with benefits for hopefully both. Okay, thank you. That was probably a really long answer that didn't need to be that long. Sorry. That was good. I, I, I did not have an understanding and now I feel like I do. <laughs> well, then it achieved its goal. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we'll we'll bring that up at the next uh, advisory committee. Uh, the other thing was I didn't know exactly where we was going to go next, so that we can kind of start planning that out. Uh, my preference would really kind of be to start on 
discussions about the uh, study that we're going to do in uh, about pricing and service levels across the community. Uh, I think that could be a benefit to go ahead and get started. So um, that would be my preference. You guys let me know. Uh, Karen, what are some of the other things, other contracts that's like escaping me right now, right off the bat? Should have pulled that up. I know one of our, I think we started with capture rate. One of our other things uh, were the shingles, concrete, drywall. Yeah. Uh, was, was, I thought, the next thing right. we were going to look at. But if, if you have, or if there's another one that you think is, Timing wise, better for us to start on. I'm all for that. I like the C and D one. I really do. I think that that can have some big impact quickly, and it can get uh, hopefully spur industry, uh, more industry to come in for C and D as well. Yeah, Pete. I don't know if you remember, but I was going to bring that up too because we were trying to do something internally just for Metro. But it would be great to try something community-wide as well. Um, and it, and that's kind of a requirement under our need for cities participation for just Metro at least, so. Yeah, I agree. I, and I think that it has a big impact quickly. And I don't think that it'll be a hard one to do. So yeah, I would say moving into the C and D uh, RFP would be the next item uh, that I would recommend. If you maybe want to throw that in the email, Karen, just as far as minutes and, and what we're going to look at next meeting, I, I think that would be helpful. Yep. Okay. Anyone have anything else or it's getting <laughs> about that time? It's six uh, months to take a break. Uh, yeah, I guess if uh, no further questions, comments, uh, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Second. Yeah, we just need to vote on it. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Nays. <laughs> there you go. Just got to remember to do that after motions. Gotcha. <laughs> it's no big deal. Maybe here in four or five months. It's a months, technicality I'll, I'll, on something. Else. Months, I'll have it down. <laughs> it's all good. All, all right. right. Well, if you're all coming right. to education meeting, I'll see you in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.